Hello everyone, we'll begin chapter 7. And chapter 7 introduces the solo growth model. Solo growth model, of course, is attributed to Robert Solo, who won the Nobel Prize for his work in economic growth, and is a foundational model to basically all macroeconomic theory about economic growth. It's all, the, all of our um, theories that go beyond this, that are current and cool and, and fancy, are basically um, rooted in this solo growth model. So we're going to begin by taking a look at the uh, overview of the chapter, and then we're going to take a look at why growth matters. Now this chapter is probably the most important of the two, chapter 7 and chapter 8, mostly because if you don't get chapter 7, you're just completely and totally going to be lost on chapter 8. So be very, very mindful of this chapter and make sure you get it before you move on. So in this first lecture, we're going to talk about why growth matters. Then we're going to go into lecture 2 and we're going to do... Um, we're going to give an overview of the solo growth model so you can see what all the pieces look like. All right, it's, it's a little like putting a puzzle together. So in less, uh, lecture two, what we're going to try to do is give you the picture that's on the box and then the first piece, which is the production function. Then in lecture three, in lecture four, and uh, lecture five, we're going to continue to add parts to the um, puzzle, pieces to the puzzle. And then finally, we're going to put it all together and talk about how the um, solo growth model comes to what we call a steady state. Now, remember from Chapter 6, we talked about in terms of a dynamic model, the idea of equilibrium is a little bit different than it is in a static model. It's not the intersection of two lines, but rather a steady state condition where the um, system has no real tendency to move. All right? No real tendency to move away from the point that it's at. So we're gonna, we'll talk about how that and how that's determined. Okay, so keep moving forward. Let's talk a little bit about why growth matters. Well, here's, here's an interesting statistic. Um, let's look at infant mortality. In the poorest one-fifth of all countries, it's about 20%. In the richest, it's 0.4%. Well, you might say, well, that, duh, in the poorest countries, they have less availability to things like clean water, food and shelter, um, medical, medical supplies and medical services. Right, exactly right. But why do the richest countries have that and the poorest countries don't? Well, because the richest countries can pay for it. So what's a good solution? Well, let's make the poorest countries able to pay for it, too. That's where growth comes in. If we look at, for example, Pakistan, 85% of people live on less than $2 a day. All right, The vast, something like 50% of the world's population lives on less than $2 a day. Um, One-fourth of the poorest countries have had famines during the last three decades. When is the last time the United States had a famine? I mean, to us, a food shortage is, well, we had a freeze and orange juice goes up by a dollar a canister. Uh, right? Rather than, well, we go hungry and starve. Well, why is that? Because we have the facilities to um, outsource from the rest of the world to um, store back what we need. It's, it, it's these richest, most developed countries can do that. The poorest countries can't. So how do we get those poorest countries from a position of not being able to do that to being in a position of being able to do that? It's, it's just a really interesting study. Um, Economic growth raises the standard of living and reduces poverty. For the most part, this is true. This is not universally true. All right, you'll you'll have people talk about growth and how it's not equally distributed. They're right. Um, just because a country grows doesn't mean poverty will be reduced. But by and large, one of our best tools in our economic tool bag for this is figuring out policies that promote growth. Um, so there's actually some graphs that we can go through. Um, this is a neat um, website called graphminder.org. Um, I'll put these um, links on the course webpage and you can play around a little bit with the data. So a little bit more why growth matters. Anything that affects the long run rate of economic growth, even by a tiny amount, has huge effects over the long run. Let's see this. This is this idea of the 
the power of compounds of compounding basically. So let's say we compare a 2% growth rate to a 2.5% growth rate. That's just a half a percent more in terms of how fast the economy is growing. And we see in 25 years, well, there's only a 64% improvement error increase in the 2% versus an 85% improvement in the 2.5%. So that's a pretty big jump. But if we go a little farther, we go out 100 years, we see huge difference. I mean, 624% increase for the 2% growth rate versus over a 1,000% increase for the 2.5%. So r tiny changes make big differences. That's, that's the important thing to remember about economic growth. Economic growth is not a short-run policy. This is very, very long-run thinking. And small changes over the long run make huge differences. All right, we will continue the conversation about economic growth by um, beginning building the pieces of the model in lecture number two.